flashlight Something you can ride to and vibe to I'm just giving you the keys to survive Never let society tell you how to begin living your life By following the norm and trends I warn my friends, don't get blinded by the media I'd rather be myself, take flight, gotta speed it on speed dial And meanwhile, my dream right beside me with a smile She like. So you're one of the few that saw this video's title and gave it a chance. I'm Ryan, this is Chengdu City of Gastronomy, and today I'm eating Kai Shui Bai Cai, boiled cabbage soup. It definitely doesn't sound like much, but I promise you this is going to be one of the best meals in this series. Kai Shui Bai Cai was invented in the Qing Imperial Kitchen. Now I know that doesn't mean much to you, but let me break it down a little bit. First of all, you need to know that China divides its history up by dynasties. Each dynasty is simply a length of time that a certain family or group ruled. So the Qing dynasty was from 1644 to 1912. It was actually the last dynasty in China. Now a lot of people think that the dynasties are named after the family that was ruling, but that's not always the case. The Qing dynasty was the name chosen, it means clear or pure. Uh, which is kind of ironic because the Qing dynasty reunited all the people living in what is now China. Previously, the term Chinese was only used to refer to the Han people. The Han ethnic group makes up, up, up like 90% of China. It's like 18% of the entire world are Han. So the Qing dynasty was the first time China was a multi-ethnic state. Everyone who lived there was considered Chinese, even if they weren't Han. It was a good time, and then of course it turned into a bad time. But there were a lot of great things to come from the Qing dynasty. They opened up to the rest of the world. They started exporting to Europe. In return, they were getting food that they didn't have before, like potatoes and peanuts. So the country was getting fed, which led to a population boom, which led to greater discoveries and an increase in arts, including culinary arts. People weren't just eating to survive anymore. Boiled cabbage soup at one time was a pretty basic dish, just a way to get nutrients, no flavor, maybe just cabbage piled up in a bowl with some broth poured on it, or maybe, maybe even just boiled water poured on it. But times were changing, food was evolving, and this dish really represents that. Okay, so we're in the Qing Imperial Kitchen. It's late in the Qing Dynasty, and a famous chef named Huang Jinglin is tired of people talking shit about Sichuan food saying that it's vulgar, spicy food. So he invents Kai Shui Bai Cai, and he wants to show everybody that Sichuan cuisine can be elegant. And it is. It's an amazing dish. The flavors are complex, but it's simple. He hits the nail on the head. People are blown away. But unfortunately, the name boiled cabbage doesn't really market well, I guess. The dish never really takes off. It, it doesn't become the representative of Sichuan cuisine that he wanted it to. It's also pretty expensive to make, so the everyday average person probably didn't even get to try it. But you know me, I'm a huge baller. Sarah's balling left and right, so we're gonna go try some Kai Shui Bai Cai. Okay, we're in Tongzilin. This is actually a pretty popular area for expats in Chengdu. I'm sure we'll see some white people. Oh, there's one now. <laughs> How's it going, Sarah? Good. Good. All right, so here's the plan. We're going to a bizarre uh, restaurant, I guess. We have to get into this, one of these buildings. Let's just walk in and that here. All right, that was easy. <laughs> I tried to find a place that did like a multi-course meal that served up this cabbage soup because that's the way you should eat it. It's a banquet style. And I found a place and it sounded good. So I tried to call them to make a reservation because you have to reserve a private kind of room. And uh, I couldn't understand them. My, I, think it's, I think it's this way though. Um, so I was like, I'll, I'll call you back. I was gonna find a Chinese friend to help me. But then they added me to WeChat and we started talking because WeChat, you can translate the messages. So I lined it all up, made a reservation. Everything's good, except they wanted a deposit. They wanted 100 Kwai, 100 RMB as a deposit, which is, seemed a little sketchy because I didn't know who these people were. It was just all of a sudden I had a new friend on WeChat and they said they were the restaurant. I don't know, maybe it's legit. We're about to find out. This is obviously just a block of apartments, but we're heading up to the 24th floor and apparently that's where we're having dinner tonight. Unless, of course, I've been scared. <laughs> it's coming down, I guess. Do you not have an apartment number? I don't know. 
there's a letter that hasn't been represented yet. Okay. That's probably it. Apartment A. Mm -hmm. There you go. Smell food. No. A? A. Yes, okay. This is where we want. <laughs> no. Smells really good. Wow, look at that view. That's cool. Well, we got our cold dishes already. So you have my name, right? Yeah, I made a reservation. Right. Yeah, yes, okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're in the right place. We made it. It's a little bizarre, but so far the food's been pretty good. We got slices of beef here, I imagine. It's like a corned beef almost. Oh, hey, what what is this? Jellyfish. Oh. Fuck, I'm dropping shit all over the place. Mm. That's really good. Buttery. Oh, this one's soft. Make them all up. Man, that food's coming fast and furious. Whoa, it's a mussel with bacon and cheese. Mm, wow. it's so good. Whoa, what is this? That is basically Hung Bao Ji Ding, but with lobster instead of chicken, cashews instead of peanuts. Some broth is really good. Yeah. fish and that broth is so buttery. It's just... Oh wow. Oh yeah, it smells like, like a roast dinner or something. What is a broth? It's so thick. Pretty much. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit, man. Just a this is it. This is the star. This is fine dining right here. So the broth in this dish is mainly chicken, but there's also scallops, um, duck. They put all kinds of different stuff in there to make it like a really fragrant broth. It takes like four hours to cook it, slowly cook it. Sometimes they throw fruit into it and they only use the best pieces of cabbage, the heart of the cabbage. Because it's high-end, it's been said to have been eaten by very important people. I think the president of Japan came by and he was just like, what is this? And he tried and he was like, oh! Tastes like water. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really it have much. That's why the president of Japan was born. Because he's like, it smells stinky shit. Let's taste it. And it was like, what? Is this the last course? Um, then dessert. Yeah, so this is a palate cleanser. This is. Uh, it's supposed to taste like that. Actually, you're supposed to clean your fingers. The finger bowl? And the Japanese president drank it and they were like, mm. they were like let's just turn this pretend like it's a thing. Good. Catch way by side. So dessert has arrived. <laughs> Look at the table. It's so cool. Is it dry ice? Yeah. Now I have a video of you eating lipstick in case I ever need that. The weirdness. Brian likes to do this thing where he eats my lipsticks. Mm. It's like, yeah, it's like a white chocolate and strawberry, maybe. Do you get the spice? You don't get the spice in the first mm. bite. Yeah, it's coming. It's I just feel it in the back of the throat. Yeah. I mean, I have spice in my mouth from everything else, but I feel it. All right. So, we're finished. We finished everything. It was really good. Um, fun, fun dining experience. You guys should check it out if you're in Chengdu. 
now before I go. Uh, we recently got back from a trip to Indonesia. I'm going to be releasing those videos soon. Um, but I'm going to start releasing videos like every you know, four or five days. I'm not going to release them at a set time. Basically, as soon as the series is over, there's one episode left. And um, it, it's mainly because I, I just I don't want to limit myself to one video a week. I don't want to say, okay, it's coming out on this day. I want to just give myself as much time that I need to complete a video so when I feel like it's complete I can release it. Generally that'll be like every four days, every five days. So my point is it's really important that you guys hit the subscribe button below and then after you hit the subscribe button there's a, a bell icon that shows up. Um, sometimes it even tells you you want to you wanna get notified and you, you hit that bell and you get notified whenever I put a new video out. I think you can change it around the settings. You can have it so it emails you or you can just have it so it sends a notification to your phone if you have the YouTube app. But if you guys hit that then you'll know when the videos come out you'll be able to see them right away. Because you can't, you're not going to be able to rely on a video every Thursday now. It's going to jump around a little bit. Uh, probably starting in about a week from today. So make sure you do that. And that's it. That's all I have to say. Have a good day. And special thanks to the Qing Dynasty. More food. This is a free gift because they like this. You get pretty good at eating everything with chopsticks. <laughs> I don't know you.